to the Solomon Dewing Budget Review. It's uh, great to have so many people interested in our presentation of the budget, and I look forward to you getting some excellent value from it. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Terry Dewing. I'm one of the directors at Solomon Dewing, and Jenny Wilcock, who you've been watching on many of the other present webinars, is one of the other directors. Together we run Solomon Dewing with our fantastic team. We're so lucky to have such a great team. And the presentation you see today, I wish I could say I put it all together, I didn't. Uh, Jennifer Palmer, who's here with me, has actually helped me, helps put all these presentations together. So, interestingly, this is uh, the, 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 the budget was deferred from May to October. If you recall back, the last budget presented, which was May last year, was presented just before the unwinnable election, which became the, the winnable election. So, uh, it's quite interesting the difference um, between the two budgets. The budget was going to surplus, which we would have accepted as COVID, but, uh, to a rather large de deficit. Um, we will again have another budget in May, and that's not going to be that far around, but you can understand why the government deferred this budget and everything that's going on. Um, this is sometimes coined as, as the road to recovery budget or the budget that we had to have. So with that, I'll kick off on the presentation. So we'll just get the uh, PowerPoint presentation up. Now you've all should have received a copy this morning, I, and I certainly hope you have. But uh, if not, let us know, but you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see um, uh, you'll be able to review the presentation now. I'm just going to get the screen. There We're starting at the end instead of the start, so we're going to have another go at that one. Nearly there, nearly there. Couple. Okay, the budget we had to have, had to have, or the road to recovery budget. So the housekeeping, the process will be: you can submit some questions in the question or chat pane, and they will be dealt with at the end of the presentation. I will endeavour to answer as many as possible during this webinar today. Um, if some of the questions are a bit hard, we'll defer to the keeper and we'll get back to you. Um, as I said, we've got the presentation slides have been emailed to you. So what we're going to cover in this review is, is the individuals and the personal ta tax cuts. Everyone's really interested in personal tax cuts, but so what's in it for me? So we'll kick off with that part first. Then we'll go on the business taxation side of things, which again, that's a what's in it for me. Because it, my, my presentation today is it's really ta tailored to you people in business. It's um, you know, not everything in the budget will be covered. It's what affects you in your business now. And these are the most pressing questions we get as soon as, you know, within, within you know, a few hours of the budget, certainly first thing tomorrow morning, these are the questions we get. So we talk about instant asset write-off, the small business asset building, the, co the company uh, lost carryback provisions, which is um, rather interesting to be, to be reintroduced after more than six years, I think, of last having that, and job maker hiring credit. Then we'll cover off some, some, some general uh, bits and pieces which will affect you, and then we'll talk about one of my favorite subjects is superannuation. So individuals, so what happened with the individuals there? So the government brought forward the personal tax cuts that were proposed to start on 1 July 22, to now start on 1 July 20. So in other words, they've been backdated by um, three months or perhaps four months. Bear in mind that all of this is proposed and until royal assent, nothing's happened. But what they've done, and this is good news, of course, they've increased the uh, the 19% tax rate, which was really uh, used to cut out at 37,000, they've increased that to 45,000. So that's that's a, a, a pass on to benefits to taxpayers. Then they've increased the 32.5% from 90,000 to 120,000. So there are some significant um, tax savings on, on this. Now there are further proposed um, changes, which will come in in 1st of July, 2024. I think, uh, yeah, 1st of July, 2024. So, you know, well, they're going to get rid of these middle brackets and just have a 30% bracket. But 2024 is a long way away. There's another one or two elections between them, so we'll see what happens. But you know, it's always what's in it for me. So as a result of the changes in these tax brackets, individuals, once you kick over the $45,000, individuals earning between 45 and 90 will have an additional $1,080 in their pocket after tax saving. That, that's your tax saving. And the effect of pushing the, the number up into the $120,000 bracket, you receive an additional 
I noticed that the treasurer had a sip of water during his presentation, so I'm just going to do the same. Thank you. The, the lower middle tax offset, which is worth $1,080, has been extended for another year to 30th of June 2021. That was quite controversial last year when, when, it, when it came in. Or maybe it was the year before now. I forgot. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, it's a tax credit, you, but you don't get that back until you lodge your tax return. But it's still $1,080. $1, but that does only apply to individuals earning uh, between 48 and 90000 They'll, they'll receive the maximum when you, when you lodge the return, and then there's a scale back after 90,000. So but at least it's, it's still in there, which is a good thing. So the government are trying to put money or keep money back in your pockets. Um, yeah, it may not be enough, but yeah, I suppose any gift from the government is good. So moving on to the business taxation side of things. Now, this is just an amazing incentive from the government. It's really um, big, I suppose. To, to bring in what's referred to as the instant asset write-off. Now, you've been aware we've been doing instant asset write-off for some time now. Once COVID hit, they increased the, the uh, it was 20,000 and 30,000. Then they increased it to 150,000. Well, now they, what they're saying, that what I mean by increase is that's the tax deduction you get as the instant asset write-off for new equipment. But what they've now brought in, the business with an aggregate annual turnover of less than $5 billion. Now, that's serious businesses. That covers 99%, I believe, of all, uh, of all businesses in, in Australia. You'll be entitled to a tax deduction for the full cost of new eligible depreciated assets, in, but in addition to improvements to existing eligible assets. So it's a big concession. So for anything uh, acquired that fits the, the definition of an depreciating asset, anything acquired after budget night installed by 30th June 2022 can be instantly written off. So that, that's, um, that's the big concession. They're further extended to small and medium-sized businesses, which are businesses with, with turnover of less than $50 million. They can also deduct the full cost of second-hand assets. So this is about trying to um, getting you to spend money, of course, you know, because spending money keeps money going round, keeps GST going round. So that's that's a, a, another significant concession. Um, but businesses with aggregate turnover between 50 and, and million and 500 million, they're actually referred to as large, larger, large, they call larger business entities, it's in terminology, not large, it's larger. But those businesses can still deduct the full cost of eligible secondhand assets costing less than 150000 if they purchased by 31st December this year and installed by 30th of June 2021, 30th of June next year. So there's an expansion there that I think the reason behind this, the government obviously is saying, look, you know, like uh, we, we know you, you can't get the equipment in, you might be able to order it, whatever. And so we'll give you an extra six months to get that installed. So. So what we've got is, is $5 billion, you get to write your assets off straight away, eligible depreciating assets. By the way, eligible depreciation assets does not include capital improvements or capital works like building a business, uh, building a building. We often get that question. It, it's, it's an asset that, that depreciates. So we have that. So we've got the secondhand assets for, for small businesses and we've got the um, secondhand asset extension for larger businesses. For small businesses, they've also said we will let you, uh, if you've got asset pooling, so these small businesses with less than 10 million turnover that are using the simplified depreciation bills can write off the balance of their pool at the end of the income year. So again, another significant concession is what they're saying, you're a small business, um, you know, being a $10 million turnover, whatever assets you have on, on your books can be written off and you retain a tax deduction. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. That's that's how big we understand how to do it. But again, look, they, they, they're bringing, for these deductions they're bringing forward, you know, depreciation on an asset could be you know, anywhere from three years to 10, 12 years. Um, but what they're saying is, you know, well, you can have it now instead of waiting later. The, the, the big issue, of course, is funding these assets. So um, just because um, the depreciation or the instant asset write-off and they're calling it instant asset expense. Just because it is available doesn't necessarily mean, mean you should take into account. You need to have good commercial reasons for going out and spending the money. But if it gives you that competitive edge or something you've always wanted in your business, go ahead and do it. 
But my point on that, that is just don't let tax be your driver. Yeah, make sure it's commercial reality. The company lost carry back rules. This is a very interesting bit. This hasn't been, uh, this hasn't been allowed uh, once in my career. And I think it was 2014, yes, that's six ish years ago. But companies with aggregated turnover, and aggregated turnover really is, is all your turnover, but you know, they put a fancy terminology in there. Uh, of companies with turnover less than 5 billion, people have paid tax in the past, and they actually referred to the 2019 year. And now, and now find themselves in a tax loss position. You're able to carry back the tax losses to the past years and obtain a refund, a tax refund. So what that means, if you incur losses, you know, as you know, we're working in FY20 at the moment. But if you incur losses in FY20, 21 and 22 or all 22, those losses can be um, carried back to offset any tax when comes from the FY19 year, including FY19. So, I mean, you might have a profit in, uh, in FY20 and pay tax, but if you have a loss in, in, in FY21, you can carry that back. But you can only go back to, to FY19, the, uh, or tax is paid in FY19. The, the, the process of doing this is a little bit disappointing. It's a delayed action. And I suppose because of the complexity of putting it all together, and the fact that some companies already lodge tax returns, but the election to claim the tax refund is done when you lodge your FY21 and FY22 tax returns. So you may have had losses in FY20 that you would like to claim back against taxes paid in FY19, but you have to wait until you lodge your FY21 tax return before you get it back. So that's, you know, whilst it's a great concession, that's a little bit disappointing because you've got losses and, and you really want the money now, the tax refund now, but but you know, I suppose take 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 what's there. It's it's, it's a great concession. Otherwise, um, losses incurred are carried forward, and they're carried forward indefinitely. But this is a situation, and yeah, you know, again, it's a once in a lifetime situation. That you 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 pay taxes, you pay taxes, and then all of a sudden you just, you could be smashed for next two, one, two, or three years. But anyway, it is there. Um, the only two rules around this: the loss carried back must not be more than the earlier tax profits. So, you know, so whatever it was, say, in FY19, you you know, if you had a tax profit of 100,000, but this year you've got a loss of 200, you may only carry back 100 and get the $27,500 tax refund. But where you need to treat carefully is the tax refund created by the carry back cannot create a franking account deficit. Now, that's a technical term that we use you know, as accountants and I've talked about clients. And what, what you'd be aware, when dividends are paid, they are frank dividends and they come out of the frank account. So if we're paid, and the frank account is created by tax pay. So if we've paid dividends out of the company to you and emptied the frank account, therefore, then you cannot carry any losses back to that frank account. So you miss out on that opportunity. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but that, that's just one of the rules they brought in there. Uh, I, I expect we'll be feeling more questions than that from our clients as, as we go. So uh, yeah, it's a, probably a heads up and we'll talk about later. So certainly feel free to contact myself or any one of your team at Solomon Jr. if you want to go through that. With you. Now moving forward, the job maker hiring credit. More water. Eligible employers will be able to claim $200 a week for each additional eligible employee they hire who's between 16 and 29 years of age. Uh, and you claim $100 a week for each additional person aged 30 to 35 years of age. Now, why have they cut it off at 35? I, 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 my reason is, uh, my belief is that they're actually, you know, this is the young people back in jobs. It's unfortunate there are many of 40 year olds actually older out there that don't have jobs as well. So, but in all rules, you have to cut something off. This only applies to new jobs created from the 7th of October, 2020. And, and then it goes for 12 months, 7th of October, 2021. So you attract, you attract the credit for 12 months from the date the position was created. Now the maximum credit is 10,400 for each new position and cannot exceed the increase in pay loss. So what that means, you know, you've got the 16 to 29 year old, $200 a week is 10,400. Uh, but if, if, they, if their um, payroll 
if their pay was only 150 a week, you don't get 2,000 a month, uh, uh, $200 a week. Also, um, uh, I, it wasn't in the budget, but there was a pre-announcement, of course, about, um, I had, had my notes here, which were about the apprentices, because they, they did announce before the budget about um, apprenticeship subsidies. There are 50% um, uh, apprenticeships, uh, um, wages are subsidised, and with the maximum of 7,000 per quarter. So it was a pre-budget announcement, but I think that really ties, it ties into the job maker hiring credit. It's just as it wasn't the budget, they didn't put it in the paper, but I, I feel as though we just need to touch base on that, because not only apprentices, it's also um, uh, apprenticeships and trainees that are registered through the, um, the schemes. So again, the great incentives to, to get young people into jobs, that's what we need. And also to get trades in, in, into jobs, young people into trades. Um, some rules around the job maker are eligibility. Uh, they must work an average of 20 paid hours for the full weeks that they were employed by you and when you quit from one. Unfortunately, it only applies to new, new people you've hired that have been on job seeker payment, youth, youth allowance or parenting payment for at least a month within the three months before they were hired. So there are rules, there are rules here, it's just not someone you know, that say left school or whatever or was changing the jobs, it doesn't apply to them. They're trying to get the unemployed back into, into um, paid jobs and the paid jobs are good for them all around. And it must be in their first year of employment with, with you, with your employer. Um, you know, it, it can't be you know, someone that you've had on before and then you bring them back. So of course if you had them before, they're probably on JobKeeper. The position can be permanent, casual or fixed term agreement. So there's a bit of flexibility there. So yeah, there, there are some rules. So yeah, you get some good news, but uh, I'm sure there are many good job seeker people, especially from hospitality and tourism that are out there that, that are looking to, to um, be retrained. So another great initiative is job maker. And I suppose and the job maker is also extended by government in the other initiatives that are out, have announced in the big spending of infrastructure. So just some, uh, to touch base on some general bits and pieces in, in, the, in the budget. And that's a, I'll miss out on some of this stuff because they're not as much, they're not as much tax burden as what I like to talk about. But the Victorian government announced some grants uh, on the 30th September. So the, <clears throat> the government has said that those, uh, those grants will not be accessible income, which is good news. I think they're $10,000. The proposed change to R&D have been deferred, so they were going to bring this some changes, so they've been, been deferred to start from 1 July 2021, which is good because I, that, that would have cost money. I, I don't have the details in front of me. Um, another amendment, which we just find this quite interesting because we actually have, we have a few clients fall into these rules, but a company incorporated um, out, offshore will be treated as an Australian resident for tax purpose if there's a significant economic connection to Australia. That is, it's got a business in Australia. It might have been incorporated offshore, but it's got a business in Australia and it's got um, control in Australia. There is mention in the budget paper that there was a, this could be retroactive to 15 March 2017 when they put out a tax ruling. Look, this won't affect many of you, but we're just amazed. We've got about, I think, two or three clients. This, this affects where we have some New Zealand companies. <coughs> Excuse me again. Granny flats. It's interesting, I'm now driving up and down the present avenue last week. <laughs> I see many cars with you know, granny flat construction signs on the side of it. So it must be a big boom in granny flats. So the government have come along and said, there'll be a CGT exemption for granny flats constructed on your principal place of residence commencing 1 July next year. Um, and this is applicable only family range, but not the commercially rented granny flats. I understand there are many cases where um, um, grandma is giving you money uh, pro or providing money to you to build a granny flat or selling yours, you might be selling. And that would make your uh, your uh, part of the land that was sold to that granny flat a capital gains tax transaction. So they're exempting that, which is, which is a good call. They've also introduced the FBT exemption for car parking benefits. Now, I have one client that has um, car parking benefits, so yeah, not very widely held and also exemption for multiple work-related portable electronic device uh, phones and iPads, but that doesn't come into, into being to one April next year, being the end of this current financial um, FBT. I don't know why they just didn't bring it in straight away. It's me. They've extended the first home deposit scheme to provide 10,000 guarantees to eligible first home buyers. 
who build a new home or purchase a newly constructed home with a deposit of 5%. So again, that, that's, that's to drive um, investment. Well, it's not actually, it is investment, but by first home buyers to get their new home. So that's a great initiative to, to get the, or to keep the building industry going. The only, only problem is sometimes the, the, the prices go up because it's government guarantee. Uh, moving to um, additional support payments to pensioners, etc., the government announced two additional support payments of $250 each will be paid, one in November and again early 2021. I, I like that when the government say, you know, $250 like that, you know, they give you a massive amount of money away. Yeah, when they go out for dinner that night, they spend $250 on the dinner. Anyway, but, but it's great that they, they, they're providing the $250. It, it goes to old uh, recipients, which are people now receiving age pension, disability support pension, care of pensions, etc. That money automatically flows. You know, the last one round, I think, was seven fifty, and people said it just turned up my bank account. So yeah, that's a nice little um, bit of extra five hundred dollars. But again, it would be nice if they would have been enough to put a little bit more in there to hook out. Um, quite interestingly, they've also increased the age of dependence allowed under the private health insurance policy. So those those who had kids that went to uni knew that once they hit 25, they had to get their own policy. So health insurance, so you know, up, up to that, you know, your family, you're able to cover <coughs> your kids and that. <coughs> now, um, if you have that um, student, the kids going back to uni up to 30 years of age, he she can still be on your um, health insurance policy. It's good saving. And the age limit for dependents with disabilities will be removed. I'm, I'm amazed that it was one for kids with disabilities. So it's a great initiative for them that they find these little bits of gems. Um, so it's probably the last point on the general, the government's committed more than 12.5 billion in additional infrastructure across the country. There's, there's, this is various programs. If you watch the budget, you would see where they were. I'm not going to go into that, but you know, it was, the, it was really a lot of money state by state. And we all know that building, you can build your way out of the recession. You know, the, the building industry you know, just creates such a massive domino effect. You know? Guys getting paid, they go down the corner shop, these tradesmen, geez, they eat some food at lunchtime. And, you know, and the, so the corner shop gets the money, they pay GST, so the big domino effect. So that, that's a, a good initiative. Um, the big issue, of course, we know we have to pay all this back, but um, spend your way out of it. Superannuation, as you know, it's my, one of my favourite topics, and I can't believe this is probably the first budget in many years. There's no changes to the superannuation contribution of pension rules. Well, wow, hallelujah, fantastic. We, we have had so much learnings going on since uh, was 2017 when, when uh, uh, ScoMo announced the big changes to $1.6 million cap. So we, we, what we've got, we've got, which is good. Um, interesting initiative, when you change job, your super will follow you. So those people have had unintended multiple superannuation accounts with multiple administration fees. Now when you change job, here's my superannuation. I thought that was an existing for me because choice of fund was there, but it looks like they're just beefing up, up the way it happens. I think this is probably from one, from, I'm sorry, from one July next year um, or when Royal Ascent. But APRA from 1 July was going to be benchmark superannuation products annual net investment performance. And I think there's going to be a bit of a, a name and shame on this one. And uh, they'll be setting up a, a website called Your Super. And you'll be able to hop on there and just uh, compare all superannuation performances. Also, bearing in mind, of course, the best performer this year is not necessarily the best performer of next year. It's, it's always a hard one to judge performances. So, conclusion. I've said it before, but this is spent your way out of the recession budget. It is designed to stimulate the economy with, with shock treatment. And I say shock in terms of, you know, you know shock in terms of cash. It's better to give us a big jolt along. It's relying on increased jobs and following increased jobs, you have increased taxes and have increased GST collection. And as we have a low interest rate environment, I think the government is relying on, on that low interest rate to, to spur us along so the, the debt that's mounting this. One trillion dollars of debt at the end of five years' time, something like that. Um, but it's not going to be that bad. Well, okay, you know, with CPI, they expect in five years to be up about two percent. Anyway, there all the number crunches. They can work all that out. And and it's good um, in that there's been a positive support for business to to encourage them to to invest. So uh, without repeating myself, I think you know, this, this 
should be a good budget for, for getting um, businesses on the go. So absolutely, we're gonna have the opportunity for questions now. And I wanna thank you for attending. It's great to, I'll say see many, so many of you, but unfortunately I can't see you. As you know, you are all, all muted. So what we're going to do is just get some uh, questions that are coming up. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a, one of the favourite qu questions. You know, it's, you know, Robert, Robin is buying her new Land, land Rover. It's costing uh, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. No, and, and can I claim an immediate tax deduction? Unfortunately, no. The the cost price limit rules still stick there. They've been around for a hundred years now. With the cost price limit is fifty nine thousand, so the maximum deduction you claim is fifty nine thousand after your GST, but uh, certainly a good question, Robin. I'm sure we'll get plenty of those over the, over the coming period. Um, here's another question from Gary. When will I get my tax refund now the tax rates have changed, changed back to um, 1 July 2020? And that's a good question. I, I wondered that myself yesterday, but we're gonna have a couple of options here. The one is, um, is they will, Come out with a hybrid tax rate, or or they will defer your refund. And, and I heard the uh, treasurer last night. No, you have to wait till you lodge your tax return. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So we've already been, you know, three months in the in the year. By the time that we see rule assent, four months. So October. So the uh, the four months you have to wait in, in, in terms of that tax reduction. You have to wait till you lodge your tax return. So again, there'll be many people like. In the last couple of years, many people lodging their tax returns really early because they want to get back dated um, tax refund. So another question is from Matt. If I buy a second hand asset, I will get a full tax deduction for that. Yes, you know, in the business world, most of our clients are in, yes, you get your full tax deduction for that, which, which, uh, which is great. Um, so another question, how do I access the apprentice subsidy and do I get 50 cents of, the, of their full wage reimbursed by, by quarter? Yes, yes, I did touch on that. Um, and the apprentice subsidy is done, it's, it's, it's registered through the training organisation. So um, the process are in place back then, going to, see, so I'm going to say March anyway, so it's a continuation of what you know. Uh, all right, credit can you? Oh, this is a good question from Wayne. With regard to the job maker hiring credit, can you also claim job keeper as usual? Well, okay, they are they're going to be separate things, Wayne, because job keeper is for employees who are already on the books, so they were on the books at one July, and job maker is for new people, new hires at, coming in now. So you will, your business can still claim job. Um, keeper 2.0 for existing employees, but job maker for new employees. So they are actually two different things. So it certainly is, is a good question. Another question here from Jeff. Do any of the FB changes help small business or is it just for the big guys? Well, yeah, there's not much in the FBT change. As I said, we only have one client that pays FBT on car parking. Maybe a few others in the city should. I'm not, I'm not sure of that. We, we tend to try and keep across that. Uh, but it will certainly be some big money saved for the, um, the corporates with, with um, city offices. And, uh, a response about the new hire that was on job, job seeker would not be getting job key to say wouldn't be eligible. Thank you for that. That's actually from here to help me out. Thank you, Heather. A uh, question about the social security payments. Yes, there's 250 will be received in um, November and the, and the other balance 250 early next year. Questions, questions. Okay, here's another one. Sorry, I have to squint a little bit, guys. The, um, when will the, uh, the tax changes flow into my pay packet? Well, as I said earlier, that we'll have, we have to wait till after the Royal Assent, yep. Yeah? We'd like to think they announced it on Tuesday night and on by pay next Wednesday, it'll be in, but unfortunately we have to wait. So, yeah, you know, it's just, just one of those things. Um, and the pensioners, of course, their, uh, their $250 will be tax-free. They don't pay tax anyway. Maybe we're, 
we're running out of questions for today. Anyone else got anything to say? We're, we're, we're 30 minutes. I don't want to keep you here for the sake of it. So I think with that, if something else comes up, now all the question, all the chat boxes are gone. I would to uh, thank you for joining Solomon Dewing um, on this presentation. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to speak to your um, client manager at Solomon Dewing. And, and hopefully, and, 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 and I don't like hope as a strategy. It's not a, it's not a good strategy. Hopefully this budget will be good for Australia. Yes, it is putting us in the hole, but we are in the hole already. Um, but you know, we, we just do need to get um, economic activity going and, and incentive to spend money. So um, well, well, well done and there'll be a response from the opposition leader tonight, which will be quite interesting. But at the moment, we'll deal with what we've got on the table. So with that, thank you everyone. I look forward to chatting with you once again in the future. Bye.